Hey guys, what's going on? It's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting Maxim XP Ma Wow, okay, Max MSP tutorial. So excited I could not even say it. Um, and that makes sense because this week I'm going to talk to you about um, using JavaScript in Max. And JavaScript is, uh, in this case, just going to be used to do things like automatically make objects, automatically connect patch cords, and it really opens up a whole new world. It opens up a whole new world of Max possibilities. Doesn't that sound exciting? Um, and I used it, or I'm going to show you how to use it to make a circular sequencer. Um, so what, we're gonna, what we want to do is have a circle of toggles and to have a metronome, you know, uh, go through them and play an event every time those, that particular toggle is activated. Um, so to start with, go ahead and make a Max patch. Uh, I'm going to save mine as circle sequencer in a folder called circle sequencer. Circle Sequencer in my Max folder. Cool, looks good. And then open up your favorite text editor, uh, or open up the best, the best text editor, which is TextMate, and then save this in the same folder and call this circseek, circseek.js. Cool. So Basically, this is your JavaScript file, and this is your max patch, and the JavaScript file is going to reference, uh, or rather a max object is going to reference the JavaScript file, and that JavaScript file will define everything that that max object does. So make a max object, js, circ, seek, dot js, and this should reference this file. Um, I like to set the auto watch flag, or auto watch um, attribute, auto watch one, and this means that any time um, this object, I change the source code here, this object will automatically update to reflect that. And I also like to add a compile message here because sometimes there will be syntax errors in your JavaScript code. If you're like me, there will be lots of syntax errors in your JavaScript code. And because Max secretly hates you, it won't actually tell you until you push compile. And then it will say some nasty message, some snarky message like, ah, you suck at semicolons. You know what? Screw you, Max. I'm good at semicolons. All right. Don't know what I'm talking about. So, um... So let's look at an example. The basic idea here is we'll define functions that um, the JavaScript object will call whenever we pass the right arguments uh, to the object in Max. For example, suppose we define a, a function called echo. Echo takes an argument e, and all it does is pass that argument e out the first outlet. Um, outlet 0e passes e out the first outlet because outlets index from 0. So instead of counting 1, 2, 3, they count 0, 2, 1. Sorry, 0, 1, 2. Um, if we uh, double click this just to make sure the source code got loaded, it did not. I don't know why. Um, we remake the object. There it is. Cool. Um, so now if we send it a message, echo cat, we should see cat come out this outlet. And indeed we do. Phenomenal. So using that basic, um, that basic system, we can make this JavaScript object do basically anything. Uh, in this case, let's make it draw a circle of toggles. So what are we going to need to do that? Um, well, we're going to need a few variables. These are just um, comments. These don't actually affect anything. Uh, but you, if you're if you're a you know if you're a baller like me, you can use these to keep your code nice and tidy. Functions and variables. Cool. Um, so what variables are we going to need? Well, we're going to need something to keep track of the most, the biggest number of toggles that we'll allow. So max toggles um, var max tog equals, let's say 16. Uh, one to keep track of the current number of toggles. Num toggles equals zero for now. Um, anything else? That should be it. Okay. So, let's define a function, count or create of t, takes a number of toggles t and creates all our toggles. The first thing that we want to do is um, clamp t to a reasonable range. So greater than zero and less than the maximum number of toggles. So if t less than zero, t equals zero, if t greater than uh, max tog, t equals x tog. So now t can't be less than zero or greater than the biggest number of toggles that we allow. We're going to set num toggles equal to t because now we know that it's safe to set num toggles equal to t. And now let's actually create the toggles. 
So for i equals, uh, sorry, var var i equals zero, i less than num toggles i plus plus, and then create the toggle. So to create a toggle, we use a function called um, new object. We go this, which just references um, max, I think. I don't know, but anyway, this dot patcher references the current patcher. And if we go this dot patcher new object, um, this will actually allow us to create the object. Uh, we create a toggle. It's x position, so the how far from the left it is in the window. It's y position, how far it is from the top. It's size. Uh, and another zero that does, I have no idea what. So now it's easy to create these toggles, clearly. The tricky part is to figure out where actually to put them. Um, we want to put them in a circle, so we're going to need our good friends, sine and cosine. Um, come back up to variables here, let's define a few more parameters. Um, toggle position parameters. Um, the first one we want to define is our toggle inset. That's how far from the left and top we want our toggles um, the entire circle of toggles to be. In this case, I'm just going to go with 90. Now, our toggle radius, that's how big we want our whole circle of toggles to be. We'll call that 90 again. And our toggle size, which is how big we want each toggle to be. I'm going to go with 30. So, um, above the for loop here, let's declare two variables, x position and y position. So all we have to do now is figure out what these should be for each toggle, and then um, that will put the toggle in the right position. Um, so if you can imagine, we want the uh, we want the first toggle to appear at the top of the circle, and then to go around the circle clockwise to come back to the beginning. That means that um, the x position starts at. In my mind, in order to figure out uh, when doing these kind of this kind of trigonometry, it helps me to think of. Um, where are we starting and where are we going? So in terms of x, we're starting at 0, the middle of the circle, going up to 1, the right of the circle, at 3 o'clock, um, back to 0 again when we're at 6 o'clock, and then to negative 1 when we're at 9, right? So to get the x position, we take uh, the toggle inset, inset, um, we take the toggle inset plus the toggle radius, that gets us to the middle of the circle. And then we need to add in another amount, which is um, the toggle radius, radius times um, the sine of i divided by the number of toggles. Oops, toggles times math.pi times 2. Cool. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're um, starting at 0, going to 1, going to 0, going to negative 1, and that's just sine. So we're taking the sine of where we are in the, uh, which, we're taking the sine of which um, toggle we're on, multiplied by pi, 2 pi, and that should give us our x position. Uh, do the same thing for y position. y position is equal to the toggle inset plus the toggle radius. Oh my god, cannot spell radius. Um, and then x position is the same as y position, except we start at negative 1 um, because 0, 0 is in the top left, so uh, the y position of the top um, toggle is actually going to be negative one, math sign. And to do that, we just have to offset this whole thing by pi over two. So we'll subtract math.pi divided by two. Sweet. And that should actually create our toggle. And if I'm not mistaken, that's literally it. Oh no, we actually have to pass these parameters here. So we create the new toggle, we put it at x position, y position, um, toggle size, and I have no idea what this last zero does. It could do anything, for all I know. Um, cool, so let's just make sure that got updated here. It did not. I have no idea why. Auto watch is letting me down. Sweet, okay, there's our code. We hit compile, and now if we hit create, 
13, we should see 13 toggles appear in our max window. We don't. Why not? Num toggle is not defined, line 30. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, because it's not num toggle, it's num toggles. Sweet. Let's try compiling again. Of course, let's make sure that got. This is really annoying. Why isn't this working? Yeah, look at that. 13 toggles. And see, they're in a nice little circle. Everything worked out. Um, how much time do we have? Okay, so we're pretty much out of time. Uh, anyway, so next video, I'll show you how to. Um, actually turn this into a cool sequencer and make it a little bit more robust. Uh, thanks for watching guys, hope that was helpful and I'll see you in part two.